Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to share the books that I have out from the library that are new to my little cart that I'm hoping to get to mostly in September and probably some in October. I'm trying to clear out my cart before I get ready for nonfiction November. So let me share with you what I have. Right now, I just started The Most Precious Substance on Earth by Shashi Bhatt. So this is a coming of age adult book. It's kind of weird so far. The main character is doing some things that are not really not really good things to be doing as a teenage girl um, like she has a crush on her teacher and also she's literally talking to a predator online using that kind of absurdity to tell something more about being a girl and coming of age in this time period um, in the 90s to early 2000s it seems like so far after that I'm going to read Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score this is a romance novel and the only thing that really gravitated me to this is the bully breed on the front cover for sure and then um, the fact that it's a romance story like an HGTV fixing up a home, you know, like taking on a fixer-upper and that sounds interesting to me. I'm looking for something lighthearted and sweet and I hope that I get on with this romance story. Then I have another coming-of-age adult book and that's Note on Your Sudden Disappearance by Alison Espoch. I'm really excited about this one. When I look at it, it kind of reminds me of We Run the Tides by Vendela Vida, which is a book I really loved last year. Then I have a pile of nonfiction that I'm really excited about. It's kind of the last things I'm gonna get to hopefully uh, or probably before nonfiction November. I have the Sewing Girl's Tale, A Story of Crime and Consequences in Revolutionary America by John Wood Sweet. All I really know about this is that it's a retelling or uh, an investigation into one of the first rape cases in the United States of America. 1793, the person who went through this was 17 years old at the time and I think that it's really going to look into how this affected American law and how we look at rape in law now, how we prosecute it as a result of all of this precedence that started during this time. I also have The Stolen Year, How COVID Changed Children's Lives and Where We Go Now by Anya Kamenetz. I'm really, really fascinated and interested in these types of conversation about, you know, kids and how they're doing with their schooling, how many kids were left behind, honestly, during this time. I did read reviews about this that said that it's very compassionate in the way that it looks at what this did to kids, and so I'm very, very interested to see what I think about it. I also have another book I'm really interested in, and it's Normal Family on Truth, Love, and How I Met My 35 siblings by Krista Bilton. As you can see from the subtitle is that this um, main person who's writing this story learned about all of these other siblings that she had and trying to understand like how much nurture versus nature takes over your life and learning more about these other people that she's connected to by DNA. And then last but not least I have a memoir and that's All Down Darkness Wide. This I saw on Alex at What Page Are You On's channel. It says it's perceptive and unflinching meditation on the burden of living in a world that too often sets happiness and queer life at odds and a tender and honest portrayal of what it's like to be caught in the undertow of a loved one's deep depression. It seems like it's going to be a really heavy read and I usually love memoirs that are dealing with heavier topics so I'm interested to see what I think about this one. All the rest that I have to show you are all graphic novels. I went kind of hard uh, on my catalog, my library catalog, when I realized I had so many new books. I feel like in general my library is not super into purchasing graphic novels as much. Definitely for kids they purchase a lot but for teens and adults not as much. And I usually have to get books from other library systems. I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now. In the past like two months they have really ordered a lot that I'm excited for. So let me show you some things that are kind of older, some things that are newer, um, and some things that I've been looking forward to but also some things that I kind of just stumbled upon and I think look really promising. I have a new release by Faith Aaron Hicks and that's Ride On. It has to do with riding horses and I think it does have to deal with friendship and kind of loosing some friendships. And this is what the art Oh man, I don't think it's even been cracked open. I think I'm the first one. Hold on. Um, this is what the art looks like on the inside. So I'll let you know what I think. I also have one um, that I've heard is really sweet and cute and I just haven't gotten to and that's Garlic and the Vampire. This is a new series. It's by Brie Paulson. Yes, the main character is Garlic. <laughs> a piece of garlic. Garlic has to confront a vampire. Obviously, Garlic needs to do this job. Vampires trying to take over their small town. It says, with humor, hearts, and an unusual heroine with more courage than she realizes. Um, this debut graphic novel is a farm fresh tale that reminds readers to believe in themselves and the strangers are not always as scary as they might seem. So that looks really sweet and that's what it looks like on the inside. I also have one I've been really looking forward to and that's The Greatest Thing by Sarah Winifred Searle. So it's following the main character Winifred as she meets two kind of 
kids who are, are like her kind of outcasts at school. It says there's lots of sleepovers, thrift store shopping, and zine publishing. So very, very teenage kind of activities. And then it says, but there's one secret she can't bear to admit to these two friends or even to herself. And this lie is threatening to destroy her newfound friendships. I wonder if this is going to touch on identity and like sexuality. I'm not really quite sure yet. I really liked the art as well. So I'll let you know what I think for sure. I also have one called Messy Roots. This is a graphic memoir of a Wuhanese American by Laura Gao. I love learning about culture through graphic memoirs. I'm really interested to learn about this person and I also like the art as well. Here's one where I don't love the artwork but I'm interested enough to give it a shot and that's Amazona by Canisales is what it looks like on the inside. I think it's following a um, yeah an indigenous Colombian woman as she's returning to the Amazonia region that she calls home. She's 19. Uh, she's trying to find evidence of illegal mining that has been displacing her family. It says it's supposed to present a suspenseful socially conscious graphic novel and a stark singular visual style. I would agree that it's very singular visual style I haven't this is not an art style that I come across very often and even kind of like the way that the panels are laid out and how the narrative kind of flows there we'll see it's pretty short one that I'm really really looking forward to is the mental load by Emma just Emma yeah, just Emma. <laughs> there she is, Emma. And this is a comic about kind of all of the work that women do at home, all of the mental task list that women are always running in their head to keep up their home. I kind of read some of it online. It just looked really, really fascinating and made me want to read the whole thing in physical form because I was just reading it on, on a screen on my phone. So here it is. One book I'm super excited about is the new one by Nick Dernasso. This is called Acting Class. If you have been watching my channel for a while, I read his book Sabrina and really loved it. The style, weird, dry humor, very dark. Like the way that it's all laid out, it's very monotone. He uses that style to really relay something about what subject he's he's drawing about. It's supposed to be about an amateur acting group discovering the tenuous line between artifice and reality. <laughs> At once a commentary on the power of art to reshape us and on the dangers of conforming. He really dives deeply, I would say, into ideas about like how we live and how society is. He does like puncture and has comments about how we live. I have two more. One is Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith. This looks really, really fascinating. It looks like it's following just a group of friends. They live in the Bronx and it says from self-care to spilling the tea at an hours long salon appointment to healing family rifts. Each story uses hair routines as a window into who these women, who these young women are and how they care for each other. Slice of life of these girls growing up in the Bronx. Last but not least, it's one that looks pretty dark and that's Our Little Secret, a graphic memoir by Emily Carrington. Uh, assaulted by an older neighbor as a teenager, Emily forces herself to move on from the trauma until one day, decades later, she spots him on a ferry. Painful and long buried memories come rushing back. She vows to get justice, not knowing she's about to open herself up to a new kind of suffering. That looks really, really heavy and it's all black and white on the inside. I shall let you know what I think about this. If you've read any of these or if any of these look interesting to you, please let me know down below. I'm interested to hear what you think. I'll come back to you very soon with some updates about my reading here. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.